Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa's Network Solutions Group, and today I'd like to talk to you about DAC Explorer. DAC Explorer is part of the DACWorks suite of software, and its primary function is allow you to easily communicate, retrieve files, and convert files from many DAC stations, or even just one DAC station sitting on your network. The DAC stations already come with some capabilities for moving files, like for example, they have an ability to automatically transfer files via FTP. However, this requires you to not only configure the DAC station to communicate via FTP by setting up some settings on the unit itself, it also requires you to set up an FTP server on a PC somewhere, plus kind of mess with all the security back and forth between that to make it happen. Now I've got several videos on how to set this up and for an experienced IT person it's pretty easy but if you're kind of doing it for the first time and not familiar with FTP or file transfer protocol then it can pose some challenges. That's where DAC Explorer comes in. DAC Explorer really simplifies all this and allows you uh, inexpensively to install a piece of software on your PC, point it at your DAC stations on your network and quickly retrieve the files, convert the files to Excel if necessary, and uh, view the data, start and stop recording, all types of things. So let me kind of uh, show you what you get with DAC Explorer. So if you go start all programs under DAC Works, you'll see DAC Explorer once it's installed and the thing you're going to want to run is desktop. I've already got it running here, but uh, essentially when it runs it might ask you to log in for the first time usually it's just going to be blank username and password. Hit OK. Uh, it's going to search if there's any DAC stations on your network initially and uh, if you've had any set up it'll try and connect to them and essentially you'll get a desktop like this when it eventually starts up. Now the place you're going to want to start once you set up is first of all you want to have your DAC stations on the network you're going to want to have gone into uh, basic setting mode you get there by hitting menu and then holding the function key for three seconds you go under communications ethernet make sure your unit's got an IP address that it's sitting on the network okay then what you can do is you can kinda of go over here and go to network and uh, if you don't see anything here right away just hit refresh and essentially what this guy's gonna do is gonna go out on your network and find any compatible DAC stations now DAC Explorer is compatible with DX's DX Advanced or DAC Station Advanced. It's compatible with MVs, the, the 100, 200, 1000, 2000 series. It's compatible also with the CX uh, FX style type units. It's not compatible with the DX P units or the DX 100P and the DX 200P, the pharmaceutical units. There's another piece of software called DAC Sign In that's used with the pharmaceutical units. So, anyways, once it's found your units here, you can essentially just then drag and drop these to your desktop. Okay, I've already done that here, so you can see here's a DX Advanced. You can kind of see that by the little star beside it. Here's an older DX that's on here. Okay, so for now I'll just uh, close out this. If nothing shows up here, it could be that your PC is not on the same network. Uh, what I mean by that is 192.168.1, that's the network, and then 209 is just a unit number on that network. So if you're not here, or your PC can't see these addresses on the network, it's not going to automatically find them. All right. Uh, if that's the case, you're going to first of all want to make sure your computer is added to that network if possible, or at least that it can route to see those. And uh, if you don't see them under there, you can always try and do something uh, like this. You can go new mount, and essentially you'll type in the IP address here, hit OK, and if everything works out, you'll see a DAC station show up here. If stuff doesn't work out, you're going to see a DAC station possibly with an X over top of it saying, hey, I can't connect to that guy, which means you've probably got some type of network difficulty between this computer and the DAC stations. Now one way to see if you've at least got a little bit of a connection going is you can go run CMD, hit enter, it'll pop up this little box and then you can go ping 192, 168, you know, uh, 1.206. That's the IP address of one of my DAC stations. 
and hopefully you'll get a response. At least that means your computer can at least see the DAC station across the network. If you don't get this far, you can't even get a ping. It, it means you've got some bigger network issues going on. Either the DAC stations aren't set up, your network isn't set up, your PC isn't set up. So anyways, once we've got these guys added here to the desktop, uh, we can start doing some stuff with them. So let me open up this guy here. I can then go and uh, click over here to this little guy here and go properties. Under properties you can kind of say how often you're going to go out there and automatically retrieve data files from the guy. Uh, 10 minutes is the smallest threshold you can do but you could up it to an hour or something like that. You can say what type of files you want to retrieve, display files, event files, report files, okay. I just hit update here to see the latest files that it's retrieved. You can say, hey, when those files come in, I'd like them converted to ASCII, Lotus, Excel. Uh, also, you know, I'd like to be able to do monitoring on this guy. I'd like to be able to do, uh, if I do any snapshots, I want to be able to do hardware snapshot printing. Okay. And then uh, now once I'm here, I can then click, for example, monitor. And I can go ahead and kind of see what's happening with this guy here. Here's a trend of the stuff that's happening on the guy. I can go through the different groups on it. You know, I can kind of go through all these different monitoring exercises, you know, stack my trends, stuff like that. Okay, so that's uh, the monitoring. I'm gonna close out the monitoring for now. I can start and stop the recorder. Currently it's started, but I could also go stop. That's gonna stop the recording on the unit. I can do stuff like insert a trigger into the record. I can take a snapshot of the screen. Uh, this is also nice here. Let's click on this data here. And essentially, here's all the files that are stored in it. Okay, and I can look at it in different kind of views. I prefer this view myself. Okay, this here shows that it's uh, an internal memory. This here shows that it's on the compact flash. This here says the different type of file it is, like a PNG is a snapshot, there's a report, there's an event, there's a display data file. If I have any batching information, it'll show up the batching information there. Okay, all right. And then the other thing we've got here is our folder. So uh, and essentially to get into this folder, you just drag and drop it to your desktop. Okay, so I've already done that here, okay. And uh, it's actually for this other guy here, let me show you. So it's for this unit here. I've dragged and dropped the folder to the desktop. And you can see as I've retrieved files from it, kind of set to that 10 minute automatic retrieval, it's also brought in the data file and converted it to Excel automatically for me. You know, and it's also brought in the report files here. Okay, so that's just how you get to those automatically retrieved. So these are now sitting on my computer so I can then browse with Excel to this directory and open up that file if I want. Okay. Uh, the other thing you can do from here is you can go ahead and uh, click on config. And what this will do is this will allow you to essentially configure the unit. And you can do stuff under uh, settings here, you know, set up all types of stuff, initialize, com, all types of stuff. All right. And I'm not going to save that. Um, the other thing you could do is you could always create a new folder, put it on your desktop, give it whatever name you want, DAQ station uh, one, if you want, just a name. So instead of dragging and dropping this folder to the desktop, I could uh, create a new folder there and I could go, hey, everything that's sitting on that unit, drop it into this folder here. And then uh, what it'll do is it'll eventually kind of start transferring the data as it collects it into this folder. So instead of sending it to this folder in the future, it'll just send it down to this folder when it retrieves data in the future. You know, also uh, say you're just kind of playing around a bit and uh, you've gone ahead and done some configuring. All of these guys usually have a little refresh on them. So you can just refresh it to see if anything new's come in. All right. So anyways, that pretty much covers the basics of DAC Explorer.